I just want to say thank you so much for being uh, a part of our podcast inside the secrets of the Caribbean. And this is all about us getting to know the islands, the people uh, on the islands, the stories. It's about, you know, island people, stories of island people. It's those who visit, those who live, those who have had major interaction, those who fell in love with the islands. And right now you're on the island of Antigua and Barbuda. And I know that you have a love story to tell. Uh, outside of you being a nomad, I mean, you've got a little bit of everything. Uh, European, Caribbean, uh, the Americas. I'm so Excellent. thrilled to have you. So yeah, tell me you. a little bit about, you know, how and why did you fall in love with Antigua and Barbuda? Okay. Um, well, I came, I came to Antigua in 1986. Um, to open what is the Pineapple Beach Club. But before that, I mean, I was born in Mexico on the Western Caribbean. So I'm all, I've been a warm weather, fair weather person all my life. Grew up in Southern California, which just added to that, then came to live here. Um, I guess when I was here, I just really took to the simplicity of life. Having lived in the Los Angeles area for a long time, I just really liked how simple things were. Um, and of course, the blue skies, the crystal clear waters and the ability to indulge my passion of water sports was, um, you know, just a, a tick in every single box. What more could I want? <laughs> I'm thinking you sound like, you know, we have uh, an image of that woman or that person who just loves life, values life and takes advantage of every opportunity, not only to travel, but to enjoy what her travel has to offer. And Antigua and Barbuda gave that to you. It, it has. Um, when I was working here, I worked, um, I was here for five years. And the last year I was here, I, um, I met someone who was on holiday here from the UK and just had um, what every, everyone called a whirlwind romance and would always say, oh, it'll never last. Anyway, um, went to the UK, we came back to Antigua in the November and were married at Gilbert's Memorial um, back in November of 1991. That is um, and then I went to live in the UK. And of course, from there, you've got, you've got a base for all of Europe, which was absolutely delightful. Unfortunately, um, in 2006, after quite a long illness, he passed. And after his passing, I started coming back to Antigua and getting a little bit more involved with island life. And along the way, um, I have to say, I didn't really have a life plan. It's, you know, one door opens and you kind of peek in and you go, yeah, that sounds good. And that's the way you, you go. And that's the way my life has been all along. But back in Antigua, where I spend six months every year, um, I travel the islands, I travel the, um, and the island itself, get involved with a lot of local things. Um, I belong to the Road Runner Cycling Club um, and we race quite a lot and join the boys out on the road. Um, I do the triathlons here, um, involved with the sailing um, and sailing week in particular, remembering the long gone days of when sailing week was quite a small regatta. Um, Yes, just taking advantage of everything that this brilliant island has to offer, particularly in the winter when it's quite miserable at other places. Would you consider yourself antagonized? Yes. <laughs> um, I remember a few years ago, um, I was helping out with some furniture moving at, um, for some friends and I wasn't sure where the crew were and I was walking around going, screaming, inside, inside, and they all, they all kind of giggled as they came out going, we're here, we're here. <laughs> so I think yes. we should probably break that down for those yeah. who are viewing and listening, because that was also funny to me as well. So please <laughs> tell our viewers and our listeners what that means when you stand outside someone's house and you say inside. Well, when you go visit someone, you don't knock on a door. You just, you walk, you walk up and you, you basically ask, is anyone inside by saying inside? And of course, if someone's there, they will come out. And if there's no one there, you'll get, you'll get a, a bit of a silence, but it's the traditional greeting when you go to see someone's, to see someone at their home. Yeah. That is funny. Uh, I know <laughs> that you would have uh, picked up a lot of secrets on the way. And that's what this is all about, you know, sort of 
uh, sharing the secrets that we have to offer mm. here on the island. Yeah. So for those looking on, what are some of those secrets that you have to share? Nina, you pretty much, you are antagonized. And of course, at Pineapple Beach Club, where you were part of management for a long time, you would have met so many different personalities. You would have been involved with so many people, local and outside of that. Yeah, I mean, what, absolutely. Were, what were some of the secrets and what was it like for you? I mean, I know John Cather may be looking on eventually. We can't <laughs> tell his secrets, but I'm sure you have a few. Uh, no, no, secrets are secrets. But um, we, it, during my time at Pineapple, you know, everything from taking a, a hotel that had been owned by a, a British family for a very, very long time and turning it into what it has now become uh, was just a, a very enjoyable process. Um, we had Hurricane Hugo when I was here that did a, quite a lot of damage and there was a lot of people involved in terms of, we had a full house of guests. We had over 120 people here that we had to take care of at the Royal Antiguan as it was then. Um, just things like um, knowing, just seeing some of the beaches. I remember going to Rendezvous Bay when you could only get in by foot, there was no road. Um, Ducana and saltfish is one of my absolute favorite secrets of the Caribbean. Um, and I discovered something earlier this year, which was amazing. And that was sorrel, but sorrel in the form of sorbets and cold, refreshing drinks like that, as opposed to the traditional Christmas sorrel drink. Oh. Um, just little things that you find. Um, I remember running into a not, not literally, um, a woman in the rainforest coming out of the, out of the jungle on her donkey with a branch of bananas. I took a photograph of her and then did a watercolor painting of it, which sold at an art show. And I've never seen the picture since because it was taken away by a cruise ship passenger way back when. Um, the beaches here around Devil's Bridge that were lovely little secret beaches. Um, my little dog that I found on the road, Devil's Bridge Road many years ago that I eventually took back to England with me and, and uh, she kept me company for another 13 years. Oh, there's just so many secrets to Antigua. And, you know, I, I love when people come visit me because it gives me that opportunity to show them the island and what I love about it and take them to special little places that have real meaning to me. So we're not trying to compare, but you've been to other islands, uh, yes. you're well traveled. What do you think is unique about Antigua and Barbuda beside the Dukuna and Soulfish, which I tried <laughs> to explain to Rhea last week, but I told her she has, the only way she can understand it is that she has to taste it and to taste it, she has yeah. to be here. <laughs> That's right. She has to yum the Dukin and Zolfish. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, what I, I guess what I like the most is just, is, is the ease of life here. Um, you know, if you're here for a long period of time, obviously if you're here as a, as a tourist, you want to get in as much as you can. But as a, someone who spends a lot of time here or lives here, it's, it's, it's just an easy, slow pace. There's no, there's no rush. Um, you've got some beautiful beaches. You have lovely climate. Um, yes, other islands like Dominica have the black sand beaches and the waterfalls and the lovely walks and Barbados has a lot of big nightlife and things like that. But there's just a real tranquility here that I just find really refreshing, particularly after going back to the UK for six months and then finding I have to come back here and it takes me three weeks to chill before I can get started. Um, but it is, it's just the easy pace of life, the friendliness of the local people and, um, and then when I started was at Pineapple, it was just their willingness to want to make the tourists appreciate their island. I want to talk a little bit about, you know, uh, your ultimate love story here. And mm -hmm. I just have to say, I'm sorry for your loss. I know he passed. Thank you. In 2006, I'm sure, you know, time really means nothing at this point in time, but you got married here. Yes. I, yes. saw them, I saw a picture or two. I mean, what was that like? Uh, what was the feeling? Was there something about Antigua that just made it even more magical? Well, having done, um, having done quite a few destination weddings as part of Pineapple Beach Club in the late 80s, and it was something that was relatively new at the time, um, I kind of got very, very involved with the whole wedding scene. And got to meet the wedding officers and, and, and all of that. And 
when we decided to, to marry, we, I was back in the UK and we decided on November and just thought November's just going to be too cold. You know, it would all have to be jackets and coats and things like that. And we thought, and then I thought, well, why don't we, we can go to Antigua and it can be just our families. It doesn't have to be a huge wedding. We didn't want a huge wedding because he was, he, he had been widowed before and it was my first wedding, but as an older bride, it, doesn't, it didn't really matter. Um, as long as the family was here, everything was going to be cool. And so that's what we did. We, I made a few phone calls to uh, Mr. Rudd, who was the wedding officer at the time, and we got everything organized um, and flew out. Uh, friends, we had a, quite a few friends that flew out. Um, and the church itself was absolutely lovely. Um, the minister there was really friendly. Um, and I remember our sort of counseling session before the wedding and him talking about fish heads and how, um, yeah, fish heads just to us symbolized the sharing of the really good things in life. Because obviously in fish head soup, everyone fights for the fish heads. <laughs> and it just became a bit of a, a, a joke, not a joke between us, but it had a meaning, you know, it was just something that we both appreciated. Um, and actually it was really lovely. We really both appreciated the fact that we could come in and get married here and start our, our, our journey here. And all my staff at Pineapple came to either to the ceremony or the reception afterwards. And that was just really, really touching, yeah. So your journey continues with yes. memory. What mm -hmm. are you doing at this point in time, Mina? What's next for you? What's happening? I know you're still affiliated with uh, the group uh, PBC, the mm -hmm. Evie Island uh, Resorts. And when I say affiliation, I, I say affiliation because of the love. <laughs> <laughs> yes, definitely. Yes, so, but but what are your plans? So, what are you doing in Antigua? Are you going to bury your navel string in Antigua, as they <laughs> say? You know that saying, right? Yes, that's right. Yes. Uh, I am. Um, well, I con will continue coming for the winters. Um, I get, like I said, I get involved with um, a lot of the local groups. Um, I still stay um, affiliated with the group and the this staff and the managers are, are friends and um, I'm fortunate enough that I get asked my opinion about things um, and advice on certain things um, and I, I quite appreciate that. I do do a little bit of project work on the side but it's really off my own back doing um, a bit of artwork for them. I did um, so the Wishing Well Foundation which is associated with Elite um, yeah. last year asked me to paint a mural at the Willikies primary school, uh, which I happily did. Um, and that was a lot of fun because the kids would come out and would talk to me as, as I was painting away and would ask questions about what it is I was doing. Um, I also got to paint their library, which was also good fun. So little projects like that keep me busy and they, they add a little bit of excitement to my day. Um, and it allows me to do my artwork and um, be a little bit more creative. But yeah, I, I quite enjoy it. And as long as um, as long as I've got that opportunity and I'm able to come every every winter, I will be here. And like you say, bury my navel strings here if I have to. <laughs> <laughs> so we're talking about COVID-19, um, mm -hmm. 2021. Of oh, course, yeah. vaccines are available. Soon they will be available to us here uh, mm -hmm. in the islands. But in terms of the visitors, the persons, say for instance, in Spain, uh, those looking on, you know, they want to come and really uh, enjoy what we have to offer. Mm -hmm. um, what would you say to them, given this very turbulent time? I know it's turbulent because we're, we're suffering. I, and I use the word suffer because it is a disastrous situation in terms of uh, numbers, guests. Uh, quarantine uh, for everyone, not just those who may be coming in eventually, but those who live here. Um, looking forward, uh, what do you see? Uh, what are you hopeful? For? Well, I'm hopeful that um, that a lot of the, the, the vaccination program will help curb the numbers significantly and eventually eradicate it, like you know, like you know, rubella and polio and stuff like that. Um, but everyone really, really just needs to cooperate with the official guidelines. Um, yes, we need to flatten the curve. And yes, we need to um, adapt to what is be quickly becoming a new normal. Um, 
we want the we want the, the guests and the visitors to come back to Antigua, as does every nation that's dependent on tourism. Um, and the only way we're going to get that is to we need to welcome them, we need to protect them, and to protect them, we need to follow. As someone who lives here, you need to follow the guidelines. And yes, it's a, it probably is a shame that a lot of the really important places on the island, like Nelson Stockyard and Betty's Hope and um, other sites like that, may not be open for them. But I think the hotels um, can provide enough entertainment and information and tours within the bubble, you know, to show them these places and make just give them the appreciation that perhaps I have, you have for, um, for Antigua. But the main thing is we, we need to cooperate with each other and protect our visitors. And that's most important. Yes. Uh, I wish we were having this tete-a-tete -tete under different circumstances. I wish I could have been sitting with you on the beach with a glass of bubbly or something just to show. But yes. this we'll is- We'll do that. Uh, we'll do that after the fact, right? <laughs> There's nothing you know. wrong with a, a post-situation celebration. <laughs> And definitely we will. Um, your favorites, uh, if I say, for instance, if I was a visitor coming to Antigua, where, what would be your suggestion? Where should I stay? <laughs> where should you stay? Oh, yeah. I guess my stock answer is it depends on what you want out of your stay. If you want a really relaxed, chilled, laid back, yes, Pineapple Beach Club's a great place. If you have a family and want a little bit more activity, maybe St. James's Club, because they, the catering for the kids and the activities and stuff, as well as the veranda. Um, something at the love market where you, you know, you don't plan on moving very far from the beach and in Hammock Cove, by all means. Um, you know, and you have so many other places, wonderful places on the island, but everyone has its own character. And it's about scoping out that character and then matching it with what you want. Um, but Antigua has something for everyone. It really does. As they say, Antigua nice. Yes, yes, <laughs> absolutely. I will be Mexican, Antiguan, and then possibly American. <laughs> That's a nice combination though. <laughs> it's, not bad. it's not bad, I can't complain. Nina, thank you so much. I wish I could get into more secrets. I wish you would share a little bit more, but that's okay. We got to keep we those secrets secret. Fun.